Okay, now we got our rod straightened. Now we got to figure out these bearings. So on the other job I just got done doing, which is buried over here now, right in here, I have to um, get the new bearings. So these bearings are one tenth under, and there's enough for a whole set, so I'm good for those. This set here was uh, two and a half to three tenths under, two to three tenths under size. So I don't have enough in here. I need uh, 17 of these, and I only got 15 or, or 14. I mean. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, or 12, just 12. So I gotta come up with some more rollers. So here's another bag. I gotta see if these are the same size as these ones. So these things uh, vary a little bit, and that is a problem. So right now I got to find that full set of size I'm gonna use. Come on. Now let's go. Oh my. Camera mount's screwing on me now. Okay, so we got to do is measure our rollers. So, so grab one. There we go. And this one is not undersized, it's big. What size are we up to? Yeah, this one's about three and a half, so this is too damn big. So we'll grab another one out of this pile. Just to see what size it is. Okay, this one here will work. This one's down about three. You can see the line right there, it's three. If you look over here, we're between the three. We're between the one thou mark there. <clears throat> but we're closer to the one side than the other, so that's how you have to guess where you're at. So that was still a little on the fat side. So what else we got here? These are different brand rollers, so they ground them differently. Okay, so here's another bag here, Sonex, which is the same brand as that one, a different time frame. So I'm going to open up a new roll, new pack here. I'm going to measure these ones and see. What we got? Okay, I'll pull out three of them here. Oh, these are small. Okay, so that one's definitely on a three. That's just two tenths under. And you look at the line, you can see how it's pretty close to the, the lower line there. So that will work. You definitely these are the same. Obviously the same manufacturer on these ones. Okay. So we needed a, uh, we had 12, we needed to get 17, we need 5 rollers, there's 3. There's 3 more coming out, there we go, there's 2 more. Double check these to make sure they're all good. Yep. All right. Good deal. So now I have enough to do the job. And let's pass that one. This bag needs to be opened up bigger. Okay, that's enough of those. Oh, last one over here. Well, this is a big one, I think. Yeah, this is one of the big ones. Don't go mixing up the big ones and the small ones now. Okay. So we're going to use up all of these. Next time we're going to use up all of those. Those ones are actually the same size as this one. So we're going to vary the rod sizes slightly. So this is one tenth under size. These are two, two and a half tenths under. So this will drop our clearance by two tenths on the diameter. Just drop it by four to five tenths. So I've been using four. 
Okay, so now I gotta set the set the four gauge in. Use a setting standard to set our standard uh, and set our bore gauge over there. So we got this. And the rod should already be over there. So we'll go over here. So it's hard for you to see, but numbers are very important when you're doing stuff like this. Alright, so this here is our setting ring. This is the diameter it is 1.6250. And then you go off zero. Well, after zero, you put two five because it's a quarter thou where it's a quarter thou at around. So it'll be that number to a quarter over. So what we do over here is we measure this now. Measure the rag. Okay, now this was at zero earlier today. And it's still at zero. See how it's right here on zero on the gauge up here. Maybe if you go a little higher, we'll see it. So, at the top of the screen, you can see how it's at zero. Let the camera keep dropping. There we go. You rotate it, and it should stay the same. Then you flip around 180, check it again. And see, it's a quarter thou bigger on one side. It's got a quarter thou taper in it on this thing. Drop this back down now. Okay, so we got this thing set. So that's important. Okay, here's our rod set. Now we had this honed earlier, roughed in. Oop, there we can see it a little bit. So now we're going to put these on there and see if these bent. We are too close. With all that bending, did we move the big end around? Easy, it moves a little bit. Okay, so I was up around zero, around one. Okay, you got two tenths out. See how it drops down? When you rotate the rod here, you can zoom back in so you can see better. So if you look at the needle, it goes down two tenths. So it's two tenths out around now. Okay, this one's two tenths or a tenth under that. Let's see, it's round. So this side didn't move. Oop, this side didn't move. This side did. And I'm going to check this big one. Now on the other set, this thing moved. Uh, oh, what was it? Three or four tenths out around. I think it's three. Okay, now this one here. There you go again. Three under, or three that way, one over. That's four tenths out. That was on that side of the rod. You flip the rod around the other way, it doesn't move. So one side, something moved here in the rod. So this side here, we got three tenths out around, or four tenths, I mean. This side over here, it's round. Now the indicator rubs right about where my finger is on the inside of this rod. It's just above, it's about an eighth of an inch into it. So that means this side of the rod now has something that's bent over, it's got an eyebrow on it. It wasn't there before. So you can see it, it's definitely in there now though. This side here, it's not there. So that's why we have to re these after you true them. That's why I started doing that. Before I didn't do that and I found out there's a problem. Okay. So right now, if you put this on there like this, we'll make this one which is uh, one. There we go. I said one. Okay, we gotta figure out our bearing clearances. Now, the way you do this is the rod was one line, one tenth of a thou under the zero. Zero is our starting point. That's how we had that check-in standard. So one tenth under, because the crank is one tenth under size, so you start your number at one down. You add any clearance you want. We want nine tenths to twelve tenths clearance on the rod down here on the big end. Back this up a little bit. It'll be on this big end right here. So that's our clearances for the rollers. Uh, nine tenths is over a stock normal motor. Hot rod motor, you got the tenth, ten, uh, ten tenths or one thousands. And then uh, the more progressive you get, you go up to 12 tenths on more of a hot rod motor. If you go into a racing motor, then you bump that up from one and a half, one and three quarter, two, two and a half, three thou clearance. On my race bikes, I run three, not three tenths, three thousands. But I run consistently at 7,500 RPM and higher, so you need it when you're that high of an RPM. Okay, this one here, we're going to start at one tenth under. You put one thou clearance, which is 10 tenths. You put your one over here, so that'd be nine lines down, or just one from here. 
Now the rollers are undersized, two tenths and four tenths. So that means you back it up nine, you back it down to seven, and the other one you back it down to um, uh, five. So what I do is I go between seven and eight tenths on the one rod, this one, and this male rod which has a, the smaller ruler, you go between the uh, five and the six tenths. That's how I did on the other set. This set will be the same way. So this rod is going to be slightly smaller in diameter than this one because these rollers are smaller than these rollers. Only by a couple tenths. But, mm. Those numbers that those numbers matter when you only have nine tenths to ten tenths clearance. If you're off by three or four tenths, you're that's actually a pretty bare. That's a forty percent error. So that makes it more important. Okay, so I'm gonna be reading the uh, gauge over there while I'm holding these. Okay, so now I gotta get these to size. So that's what we're doing now. Now this has the coarser stone in here right now, which is what I've been using. So I'm gonna rough it a little bit tighter. Then I'm going to switch over to my finer stones. i got two stones finer. My smaller stones are going to be five to six. These I get down to within about half a dial. Then I switch over to stones. So I want to get this needle down to uh, about two or three tenths below the zero number of where I'm going to get to on this one. That'll leave me about seven, or seven tenths, eight tenths to hold out. And the small one and one the other one. If you put heat in the rods, it makes the rods bigger. stone over here. That's number two. That's 
coat. Just change to a finer stone. I think this stone here is like a 180 grit or something, 220 grit, something like that. Probably around that. One of those numbers. This stone here, we're going to drop down to, nice and cool now. We're going to drop this down to probably in the 300 grit area. And our final one will be in the 400, 500 grit area. Bucket of oil here is at room temperature. 
four and a half gallons of oil here. Now you feel the room temperature and you measure it again. A tenth and a half plus. A tenth and a half of oil. This one's the same one. Ten tenth and a quarter. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my fine stone now. Do the last of it with the fine stuff. Okay. So right now the finish looks like this. I don't know if you can see it in there, but I'll go ahead and get it finer. Six for six. Now this one here. About six and a half on our side. About the same. I'm going to get the seven to eight on this one. Into the 
a little bit this is gonna get my camera dirty I'll show you what it looks like I got oil all over my hands which doesn't work very good in the camera it's not good for it anyway I haven't dropped it yet either almost a couple times but Tony oil doesn't like coming off it's still sticky and slimy okay so now Okay, here's our numbers right here is what we're looking at. Let me see, turn the light off, you might be able to see better. Okay, we're gonna grab our big rod here. This is our male rod. Okay, we were shooting for uh, five to six. So right now you see we're just below six. About five and a half right there. Six right there. Flip around the other side. There's six. It just bounces three quarter back and forth. See. One going like this, and the needle's not really moving. See, so this was the bad side of the rod here. So you're about half a tenth in there, a little bit over six that time. Okay, this one here, our female, we wanted a seven to eight, so this one here, red right about an eight. See, it's seven and a half to eight. We're doing the same thing with the rod back and forth. See? The needle basically isn't really moving hardly at all. So even though I'm moving the rod. So it's pretty damn straight. Like so the last new set of us as I just did, seven tenths out, brand new. Took the crankshaft apart to rebuild the rod. Brand new crank. And that's why I rebuilt it, because it's junk. Okay, so that's how you do your rods, that's how you size them. So we got staggered size because the bearings are a little bit different. You know, every tenth counts, so I compensate. And we've got the pin bushings all set too, so I'm going to go clean all these all up, and then that's going to be it for night on doing this. So I'll get the bearings all uh, matched up to what we're going to use over here. So I'll take the bearings out and put them in that bag so I can keep them with it. And we're going to be using these aluminum cages. So i got to do some machine on these flywheels so I can't just put the crank together right now, but that'll be the next project. So. This is that shovel head motor that was uh, had the crappy crank in it. Yeah, that S and S one in there. Now it's just like this. It's perfect, and the trillion's just about perfect. Watch some of the previous videos. 78 shovel head stroker, 93 incher. You'll see what a crappy crank looks like when I took it apart. All right, that's it for tonight. It is ooh 115 down there. You can see down there. Get an early start for tomorrow, see? It's only 1.30, 1.20 almost. It'll be past 1.30 by the time I go home. So, all right, we're getting an early start on tomorrow. Then I'm going to take a rest break <laughs> for a few hours. We'll be back at it tomorrow. All right, that's it for tonight.